Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I am on my way to the Washington DC area. This is a retreat for the leadership of my organization. And I have to tell you, this is the <laughs> this is the first time that I am actually traveling for a work event in probably two full years. So I wanted to hop on and just share some of the neurotic, absolutely neurotic thinking that I went through as I prepared for this one day trip by the way that's it I'm driving up and I'm driving back for me the drive is a couple of hours without traffic now the corridor going up into the DC area well it's I-95 and it tends to get absolutely insane with uh, and I forget this I forget I forget and I forgot <laughs> how insane this roadway gets with big trucks big tractor trailers there's lots of bottlenecks here, there, and everywhere. When, once you get up into the D.C. area, there's an area of roads that converge up there right around the city where all the roads sort of lead into the major highways. And people call it the mixing bowl because there's traffic coming into that section of roadway from every direction trying to get into or out of D.C. It's the mixing bowl, and the mixing bowl gets really thick with traffic to the point where you can barely move. And sometimes you're sitting in that traffic just for an hour trying to get into the city or trying to get out of the city. Anyway, so we had this brilliant idea to have a leadership retreat where we, the folks that are on this leadership team, we've been meeting by video conference for two years. And I feel like I know these folks, but it's funny because I've never seen some of them in person. I've seen most of them, but not everyone in person. So we don't even know like our own, like each other's physicality, like what we look like, whether we're tall, whether we're small, whether we're wide, whether we're thin, uh, you know, how we walk, how we sweat, what our swagger's like. We don't know. And you know, you only see people on video conference from literally here up. So. You don't know what they dress like and all of that. So let's get to that part of things and then I'll circle back to the other stresses. My biggest stress, if you would believe it, it doesn't make any sense, but I know you won't judge me. In fact, I know you know what I'm talking about. My biggest stress was, what am I gonna, what am I gonna wear and what am I going to look like for this retreat? So here's some considerations that I had to make my mental way through and so let me back up and say that on one of the team calls, someone jokingly said, uh, what, are, you know, what are folks wearing? Is it okay to wear items that have the word sweat in them? Sweat, hashtag asking for a friend. Now the person asked jokingly, of course, no one's gonna wear sweatpants to a business meeting, but um, the answer from our leader was, you know, make sure that you are comfortable and casual. So casual has very many meanings. Okay, so my mind goes immediately to when I'm casual, y'all, I am, <laughs> I'm in leggings. I'm in leggings and long sleeve t-shirts. And in fact, that's how I work a lot from home. I just, I make sure that I'm decent, like from here up and I've got my leggings on, my workout leggings or my yoga pants or whatever from the bottom because no one ever sees those. And I wear my slippers. I mean, my fuzzy slippers. I gotta be comfortable. I gotta be comfortable. So my mind went to, okay, for the lunch part of this meeting, we actually also have other guests, like other guests from the organization, including leaders from other parts of the organization that I have never met in person. We've talked on the phone, we video conference, we've worked together virtually. And you know, I have this thing about first impressions and I have this thing about how you look at work in general. I am a person who believes that you should bring a clean, well put together self to work. That doesn't mean you have to have a three piece suit on and that your hair and makeup and all of that has to be absolutely exquisitely perfect every day. It does mean to me, I hope you showered. <laughs> I hope you at least combed and styled your hair in some fashion so you don't look like you have bedhead coming into work. I hope you have a decent scent on that doesn't even have to be perfume. Like it could be your shower soap or whatever. Or it could be nothing. It could be the absence of scent that is also as pleasant. And I hope that you look fairly put together in terms of your clothing, meaning you are not disheveled. You don't look like you need an iron. You don't look like you literally rolled out of bed and threw yesterday's clothing on and ran out of the door. That you look neat, neat and presentable. For me personally, that is a form, I was taught and I believe, it is a form of respect for your colleagues to show up looking decently put together. Again, we're not talking about, you know, photo shoot ready. So what does that mean for me then getting ready to go to this 
trip in DC, it means I struggled <laughs> to figure out what to wear. Because of the leadership position that I hold, I wanna convey the feeling and vibe of that position, but not in a pretentious way. I never, ever, ever wanna come across forced or pretentious. I always wanna be myself. But let me tell you what else is complicating, or was complicating, the clothing decision. I've gone at this point through two years of being home for COVID with a lot less physical activity and pretty much eating whatever I felt like eating, knowing darn well I should not have been doing either of those things, sitting still and eating too much. Bad combination for Z waistline <laughs> and bad combination for fitting into tons and tons of clothing that I have in my closet that I don't wear because I don't go into a work environment and I don't have any need to pull from my suits, my business pants, my button down tops or anything like that or my dresses. I don't have a need to pull for those. So I literally have probably several hundred pieces of clothing sitting in my closet that are nicely tailored that I never wear because I don't need to. What do I reach for? My leggings and my t-shirts and my flip-flops and my slippers. So enemy number one for my peace of mind was what is Veronica going to wear so that she conveys this image I think I need to convey. Mind you, no one cares about this except for me. I probably could have shown up in jeans and a white t-shirt and everybody would have been just as happy to see me. So these are sort of self-imposed restrictions and rules about what I should look like. So back to the closet situation, here I am kind of feeling my way through all of my clothing. I've got all these slacks, like work slacks, the ones that have the lining in them, okay? Linen pants and all things like that. And I knew what was gonna happen. I knew it. I knew that I was gonna pull a couple off of their hangers, try to stuff my little sausage self into them, and I was gonna have crazy pinching around the waist, muffin top, all sorts of stuff going on. And I'm thinking, I gotta drive two hours up in fairly stressful traffic, and we're gonna be there the whole day, we're gonna have dinner in DC, and then I'm gonna drive back this evening. So sure enough, I pull off the pants, and what do they do? <laughs> Could I button them? Yes, thank you Jesus, I could button the pants. However, however, the amount of spillage over the band was entirely too much and crazy uncomfortable. All I could think was, I'm gonna be sitting in that car miserable. I'm gonna be miserable. My belly's gonna be pinched. I'm gonna be pissed at myself and at life because I ate one too many Reese's peanut butter cups you know, during lockdown and have not moved as much as I've wanted to except occasional on the treadmill. You know, I talked about in a previous video on this channel that I end up exercising like at night for 15 minutes and call that a session. That ain't getting us nowhere, okay? So yeah, the muffin top was just outrageous. The pinch edge, that's what I'm gonna call it. The pinch edge happening around that waistline was beyond restrictive. Like it was taking my breath away. And I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna make it in a car that long. There's no way I'm gonna be able to sit comfortably in a conference room with my colleagues without feeling like I'm gonna die. Like these are my final days. I should have written my will and <laughs> contacted next of kin. So pants were out. So I was like, can I actually get away? Can I get away with wearing some leggings to this? If I wear a nice top and a blazer, can that, you know, some booties or something? Can I do that? So then I was on the hunt for some leggings that did not have shine to them. Some leggings I could get away with. Now, I've never shown my full self on camera, not because I'm ashamed of myself, but just, you know, I'm always recording from here up. I got some thick legs. I got thick, thick legs. I don't have little skinny legs. I never have, even when I weighed a lot less. Like, look, in middle school, I was a fully grown woman. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of us ladies develop early. So by the end of elementary school, I was a full grown woman. Use your imagination. And so I've had the same body, but have gone, you know, up and down in weight. But in middle school, I weighed probably like 110 pounds, fully grown woman. And my legs, even then, were pretty thick legs. It's just genetic. We got, we got big legs in my family. So... I'm imagining myself putting these leggings on and some boots. I got lots of cute little like cowgirl kinds of boots and booties and things like that that are really, really fashionable for casual wear and work. And then putting like a little, you know, a cami and then a blazer. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. There's going to be a lot going on in the lower netherlands of my body. And maybe that's not going to work. So then, what is the option that was left? A dress. 
So I'm like, yeah, let's go look at the dresses. I have umpteen dresses. I shop everywhere and mostly Amazon. I've purchased 9,489 dresses off of Amazon of various sizes, lengths, you know, shoulders, sleeve kind of length type things, floral, non-floral, formal with a lining, non-formal stretchy dresses. I got it all y'all. But the question was, which dress, which dress is going to help me look and feel my best? Look and feel. Because I can't be a sausage up in a dress that like zips up. You know what I mean? Because those tend to like hug tight. And any part of you that has excess meat is going to be popping out of the openings on that. Mama can't have that. <laughs> mm -mm, nah. So I was like, I got to go for something uber stretchy. It's got to be stretchy and it's got to be semi-formal. Not semi-formal like a semi-formal event. But a little bit like casual but also formal enough for work so that I convey I'm serious about this meeting. But not too serious. This is the craziness that's going on. So I settled on a dress that has like three quarter sleeves. I really love this pattern. And here's the secret. My ladies out there who have gained some weight, listen to me. Come in close. Make sure that your dress is stretchy, but that the fabric is thick enough that it's not showing all the stuff that you don't want people to see. You know what I mean? And make sure, especially if you are big busted like I am, okay? I'm working with some stuff up on the top rack, y'all. Make sure that your dress is A-line-ish, meaning it cinches, like this dress I can't show you here, it cinches under the boob line <laughs> and then kind of flares out from there. So I put this dress on and I thought, this makes me feel feminine. It makes me feel put together. Um, I don't feel heavily restricted in it. I can sit down comfortably. I will not feel constricted, restricted, stuffed in, uncomfortable, things pinching. And it looks put together, at least in my opinion. All right, so we had the dress thing figured out. Then I noticed I don't want to wear stockings. I don't. I don't like wearing nylons. I used to. I grew up in the 80s. We wore nylons and we wore slips. Did you wear slips under your skirts or dresses? I don't play those reindeer games anymore. Mama lets her legs out and mama doesn't play with slips. That's not true. Uh, stop lying, Veronica. Stop it. Now, if, <laughs> if I am wearing a dress that has a lighter material and I want a certain silhouette to show or not show, right? Then I'll think about wearing a slip, okay? Because it helps to pull things in together or some shapewear or something like that. Nobody wants to wear shapewear on a whole trip up to D.C. and back while you're sitting up in a conference room with your colleagues. You guys, oh my, oh my word. This foolishness that goes on in the mind. So my legs are pale is where I'm going with this. I haven't had any sunlight on my legs in a year. I haven't done any self-tanning of the legs. I only ever do self-tanning of my face and like my, this area and my arms. So what does Veronica do? Because <laughs> I'm not wearing stockings, remember. I'm not doing it. I take my San Tropez tanning mist and I get in the shower and I mist my legs, but only from the calves down. That's some stuff, you guys. That's some that's some <laughs> that's some absolute Houdini stuff right there. And then the question was, what shoes do I wear? Because I have most of my shoe wardrobe, I have some flats, some but most of my shoe wardrobe are like Oxfords that are like in the men's style, but they're made, they have, they have female feminine lines to them. If I want to wear flat shoes to a work environment, I've got the booties, like I told you, <clears throat> the little boots and stuff like that. I have a lot of flip flops, but what I have the most of, and I don't even know how many, I have to have hundreds of pairs of stilettos. I love, love platform five inch heels. And I'm not talking about stripper heels, y'all. I'm talking about some nice, well, let's let's qualify what I mean by nice. I'm not talking about, I don't have a closet full of Louboutins and Ferragamos and all of that. I have a closet full of just regular designer stilettos. So like my favorite is Vince Camuto. I have a bunch of beautiful stilettos from, um, maybe they're not really stilettos, maybe they're just five inch heels. Because when I think of stilettos, I really think of like the thinnest, the thinnest, highest, longest heel. And not all of my heels are really thin. Some of them are a little bit chunkier, but they're tall. I have lots of heels, 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 and more heels. I'm a shorty, 
I don't know if I've ever shared with y'all my height. I'm 5'3". And when I used to work in an office full time, I loved to put on heels. I did because I felt taller. <laughs> it helped elongate my, you know, physical image. And I like that. So, and I love all those heels, but I'm going to park in a parking lot, a parking deck. I'm going to have to go up 10 stories to the conference room. No one else is going to be wearing heels, I'm pretty sure. And if they are, it's going to be like a little... A little I'm gonna say taco because that's the word for heel in Spanish like taco except it's taco the tacos the little tacos that are like a couple of inches high at the most a kitten heel or something I don't really see my colleagues being the ones to walk in super put together head to toe with stilettos right so part of my struggle was how can I look put together without overdoing it because I believe in you know when in Rome do like the Romans that doesn't mean you have to be exactly like everyone else but you don't have to stick out you know just to be unique you don't have to do all that it's okay to blend in sometimes especially if I'm not there to be a model so I got all these contradictory things going on in my head you gotta look put together but you can't be a model and this is what we women do to ourselves by the way I can guarantee you every gentleman getting ready for this meeting pulled a pair of slacks they pulled the shirt and they walked out the door me it was a whole entire psychiatric ordeal this morning getting ready I end up getting like little ballet flats boom I'm done I'm done. I'm done. I can't think about it anymore. And I certainly don't want to bring big heels. By the way, I did attempt. I can't believe I did this. I did attempt to put on a pair of stilettos today just to see. Can I do this? Y'all, I look like a baby giraffe that had just been birthed. You ever seen a little baby giraffe try to walk or a calf or something like that? They're like <laughs> totally unsteady on their feet. I was that person. I was wobbly. I looked awful. I looked like I had problems with my feet so I was like this is not gonna happen <laughs> it's not gonna happen and then we're gonna go into DC for dinner later to a restaurant I certainly don't want to be walking down DC streets you know trying to like steady myself on these heels like a, a crazy person just because I want my feet to look cute so then let's talk about makeup and hair you know I took a fresh shower you know I washed my hair this morning I got a lot of hair and it carries a scent if your hair is not freshly done or you don't have fresh hair products in them, your hair can actually smell musty. I don't think my hair really ever smells musty because I don't let it ever get to that point. But I don't, you know, I can go three and four days or more without washing my hair as long as I do dry shampoo and that kind of thing. Anyway, I wanted to wash my hair is the point that I'm getting at because it's important for me to smell clean and pleasant. So again, most of the makeup I've been doing over the past two years has been makeup for <laughs> videos, YouTube videos. So when you're doing YouTube makeup, you have all these huge lights. You can have like a big ring light. You have the big box lights if you're using those. You have natural light if you're sitting in front of a window. And as I've always said, all of that really washes out your makeup. So for me, I've been doing like excessive makeup, excessive, like pound upon pound upon pound upon pound upon pound and then add on a few more pounds and then another pound for good measure kind of makeup <laughs> just hoping that it even shows up on camera I'm gonna be in close quarters with people today I'm gonna have people sitting right here next to me up in my face do I really want them to notice my foundation do I want them to see the powder that I've applied to my face do I want to have excessive eyeshadow with glitter where my colleagues are going to be like, are you okay? This meeting just isn't that serious. You look like you're about to go out to a club and go dancing. No. Do I want to do heavy bronzer? Like I'm cutting in my cheeks and cutting out my jawline? Also, no. Nobody needs that. Nobody wants that in a meeting. So I went for very, what is for me, light makeup. This may look like a lot to you, but for me, this is very subtle. <laughs> So what did I go for? Because here's the other thing. I wanted my makeup to last through the evening. So it's 8 o'clock. And I'm putting on my makeup at like 6 in the morning. So I have to expect that my makeup will last reasonably for 14 hours. Wow. So what I went with, I definitely did moisturizer and primer. I went with my Veil Primer from Hourglass. I thought that that did a nice job sort of blurring out the skin, prepping it. I definitely did my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. And then the question was, and I did the Ulta Under Eye Primer. It helps to like fill in the little lines a bit to give it a little more hit of moisture than your regular moisturizer. So I'm like, what can I go to that is old faithful, 
I know it's gonna look good and perform pretty well. Like, does it have to be perfectly in place till eight o'clock tonight? No, but I don't need it breaking down like midday. So I reached for Armani. Giorgio Armani Beauty came through for me today. I did the Armani Concealer and I did Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I have a lot of foundations that could have lasted, but I also want it to look fairly natural. So that one does it for me. I got, I used the shade five since I'm pretty pale right now. I don't have self tanner on. And then for powder, when I powder in person, usually it's heavy, like I said, for camera, but the powder can settle in your line. So I needed something super lightweight and nothing is better than my very, very lightweight Pat McGrath under eye powder. It's like a blurring powder, skin fetish powder. I don't know, I put the name up here somewhere. And I used a spot brush, meaning a littler brush instead of a big powder brush to like slam it all over my face. I used a little brush and just did a light wash under my eyes, a little bit of target powder around my nose that gets oily and down in this section that gets oily. I didn't mess with the rest of this because I wanted it to look natural. I used a Charlotte Tilbury bronzer because it is one of the most flawless applications, very, very light in appearance. It's not a heavy bronzer at all, but it does a nice job of giving you a little bit, a little bit of brown zhuzh, sunlight zhuzh around the corners of your face down in here. I did a little tiny bit of contouring with it and on my nose slightly. Because again, people are sitting next to me. So you guys know the disasters that I create with bronzer and contour. You've seen it. My favorite product, and yet it's the one that I have the hardest time using. <laughs> so I did a super duper light dusting here that is barely noticeable. Unless someone knows, oh, she's that's a bronzing technique. They won't be able to tell. I used a Patrick Ta. Patrick came through for me today. Patrick Ta blush. And then I put the cream over it. Right? Usually you put the cream down and then the powder over it. I did the powder and then the cream and then I used the major dimension palette from Patrick Ta. I was going to use Biba from Natasha Denona but I've used that recently and wanted to grab for something a little bit different because I like to rotate through my shadows so I really love the major dimension one which is the warmer tone palette and major dimension two which is the rosy tone palette they've been beautiful and they have done me right so um, here's what I'm working with for eyeshadow I just did sort of a light what I think is a light color in the crease deepened in the corners a bit and then fluffed that deepening up into the top part of the crease and I didn't do any shimmer on my lid because I didn't want to be distracting today I have to present too I have to present on top of all this stress y'all I gotta present um, or facilitate rather it's not like I'm standing up there presenting a lecture but I'm facilitating a conversation I did there's a color in the palette that's lighter that has a little hint of little sparkle shimmer but very 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 subtle it's not like an actual glitter or metallic shade and I did that in the inner corners for a little bit of zhuzh and then I also did lips I didn't do lipstick here's why we're gonna have lunch we're gonna be talking I'm gonna be drinking from a coffee cup and all that please God don't let me have coffee breath please please don't let me have coffee breath I need to remember to bring mints in but so I did a little bit of liner and I brought a couple of lip glosses like a darker brownish one and then a lighter one to kind of layer together to just have like a juicy healthy lip look without having to fuss with the precision of lipstick all day ain't nobody got time for that but I had time for all this other foolishness that I'm telling y'all about. <laughs> so then do I, I did a little bit of eyebrow pencil. I didn't go too crazy because I didn't want to have like super structured brows that look crazy when you're sitting up next to someone. They look great in pictures, but when you're shoulder to shoulder, you're like, what's on your eyes? Then the decision was, do I want to wear contacts? If you're a contact wearer, you know there's a part in the day where they can get annoying. And the last thing at that part of the day that you want is to have contacts in your eyes. So I wanted to be comfortable, so I pulled out my, my glasses, my glasses, and that's it, that, that's it, that's it. That's what, I, that's what I would use. Did my hair, I curled it. I didn't do too much to it, but I did add in a little bit of curl, because I do think that makes a big difference. And I'm done, I'm done. I you chose simple jewelry, you know, that I usually wear that I'm comfortable with, and I'm out. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all, my favorite part was choosing a fragrance. And so I had a lot of drama around the fragrance selection. Can you believe that? Like I totally stressed, but I am a person, you know, we joke around on my other channel, Veronica Says, where I review fragrances. I joke around about overspraying. 
and I do overspray at home, meaning I like douse myself in a fragrance. But you all, when you're around colleagues, especially people who may have sensitivity to scents, they're allergic to things, you really need to be respectful. Like what a jerk you would be if you overspray like a heavy amber or oud fragrance or a heavy floral and like me going into the office sprayed down in organza ain't gonna work. going in there with lancome's oud bouquet i i would make enemies so i had to choose a fragrance that was softer on me that i would like that i would feel elegant and i wanted to feel elegant i wanted to feel put together and i wanted to feel grown up so there were some fragrances I was looking at that really didn't match that, but they were nice for office. Like I love my, my signature still from JLo. It's a gorgeous fragrance, a tea and citrus and some florals, a little sandalwood, but it is on the younger, more youthful side. So it didn't give me the seriousness that I really wanted for a fragrance. I didn't want to be austere, but I did want to be taken seriously with my scent. I also thought about Anjo Duman Le Secret which is a woody citrus or a citrusy woody fragrance, depending on what comes out most on your skin. But again, it just felt a lot lighter, happier, more fresh and youthful than maybe I was going for. I also looked at clean skin, clean reserve skin. I have the regular clean skin and the reserve skin, which is like this musky scent that's really light. It's almost like a your skin, but better kind of scent, like glossy AU, that direction of fragrance. But it didn't give me what I wanted. And then it occurred to me, you know what? I'ma pull out old Balenciaga Paris. Look at this bottle. I call Balenciaga Paris my Snow Queen fragrance. It's woody and it has this, it's a pale wood, like an eau blanc or blanc or white wood. There's something very blonde and simple, blonde in color not blonde as in like blonde come on you guys I'm not talking about like a blonde woman you know what I mean like a brownie can be a blondie that kind of blonde and it also has the most subtle but elegant florals not what I typically go for like iris violet tones and a splash just like a of powder not so much that you would call it powdery but enough to give it like a coldness it's a little cold but something so just elegant and standoffish about it at the same time I joked around about it being like a librarian you know knowledgeable kind but all about the business and so it just it did what I needed it to do and I ended up spritzing myself pretty heavily so because I know it'll fade a little bit on the ride here and I brought a little decant of it too so I'm excited to wear Balenciaga Paris to bring the whole feeling the whole vibe of who the heck I'm trying to be today together so that's my morning you guys I am officially stuck in traffic which I knew was going to happen it's 9 30 I don't think I'll get there probably till 11 and it is what it is between that and the clothing decisions and the makeup decisions I'm tired I'm ready to turn back and go back to sleep Anyway, I am truly excited to see my colleagues and meet some of the people I haven't had a chance to meet. And so I hope that you enjoyed this ramble fest on my trip. Thank you for keeping me company. I'm gonna turn on my tunes and I'm gonna jam out to some Dave Matthews and some Pearl Jam and some 80s pop songs. I want my one hit wonders. I want my Genesis. I want my Karma 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 Chameleon. I want my Ario Speedwagon. I want it all. And then I'm gonna jam out to some 90s songbirds like your Mariah Carey's. But when she gets to the screeching parts where she's going into like 10 octaves up, I gotta turn stuff off at that point. Anyway, let me know if you enjoy this kind of in the car or as you vlog type of chit chat. Just sharing the random nonsense that floats around in this big old head of mine. And I will be happy to share more of these with you. Take care, thanks so much for keeping me company.